No, no, that looked like there was a delay. It was weird. Yeah, I don't know why. Okay, anyway, sit closer, please. Move in a little bit. Move in a little bit. Okay. Okay, after. okay there. No, because that, that's better for you. I don't, I don't need the extra lighting. <laughs> you don't need, you don't want the extra lighting on your head. <laughs> yeah, I don't want the extra lighting right, on my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't want the extra lighting. Okay, anyway, so... Um, are, we, are we doing? Are we going? Yeah, we're going. We're going. Okay. Okay. So, hi! Liam and Carl from PresentationExpressions.com. So, what are we going to talk about, Carl, today? We're going to talk about how... Okay, now this is my title, okay? How to avoid boring, you know, presentation slides. Okay, how to avoid boring presentation slides. But I, did say, I did say to use presentation slides. Okay, yes. And so what is, what is, your, what is your title? Well, it doesn't matter. Let's just get on No, it does it. matter. What, what's your title? How to put new life into your presentation. Okay, anyway. Mm. You guys tell us which title is better. We're going to put, you know, I don't know what we're going to put for this one. But, you know, tell us which one you like better. Because I think, you know, his is... It's all right. I mean, I, this is I'll not use, useful information. <laughs> I'll use other words when we're not on yes. camera here. But in any case, uh, so why is it important that we should not have boring presentation slides? Or why is it important that we should add new life to our presentation slides? Well, we want to make our <clears throat> presentations interesting for our audiences, of course. Right. Not boring, in exactly. other words. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Which is why I titled it How to Avoid Boring Presentation Slides. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> so let's get back to the subject of today. Oh, we, okay. So we do have something we want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Well, you were you were preparing, or you were rather you were designing a presentation for a client quite recently, Carl. Right. Right. Exactly. And one of our colleagues or one of our associates suggested that you use a particular website to give you new life. Yes, to give word. well, not me new life, but to give the. <laughs> Because you said to give you new life, but... I did, I'm sorry. But to give yes. the presentation slides new life. And this is actually from someone, Joshua Davies, who mm -hmm. is someone that has been guest, who has guest posted on our site before. That's so right. he recommended that we try out some new colors. Mm -hmm. okay. And, and the, <clears throat> in this site is, I believe it's called colorlovers.com. Right, colorlovers.com. Right? And color is spelled the British and the Canadian way. The Canadian way, which, yeah. So... Uh, don't do that again. So in any case, color is spelled C-O-L-O-U-R. Right. Okay. And then lovers. Okay. Lovers.com. So you can see here right now uh, a shot of uh, my computer screen. You can see how some of these colors have been used. Okay. So instead of using the kind of normal colors that you would get with either PowerPoint or Keynote, it's possible to actually try out different colors. Now, to be perfectly honest, how you do this in PowerPoint, we didn't actually try it. Okay. But... There is a way, I believe, a, like a color picker in PowerPoint, they can choose different colors that are not in the regular color palette. Right. So, so the, the example that we're going to show and the way we're going to show it's being done is actually on a Mac. We've got right, to point exactly. that out, So I this think. is done on Keynote right now. And actually, the colors that you're looking at right now with the kind of yellow background and also the text is actually kind of like a deep uh, purple color. Deep purple is a band. Did you know that? Yes, I do. Okay. In any case, so it's like a deep purple color. <clears throat> Isn't that the guy with the one arm? Is that the guy with the one arm? No, that's Def Leppard. No, you're right. That is Def Leppard. So anyway, um, so we've got here, this is the actual color palette. Now, <clears throat> my voice is going here, but... <clears throat> <clears throat> well, can I just come in here then a little yeah, bit sure, whilst, yeah. whilst you clear your yeah. um, throat there? Yeah. I'll What's really the interesting again. about these color palettes is they are exactly that. They're a palette. So they're already colors that go together. Right. And I think that's quite important. Right, because you can really screw up your presentation badly if the colors look bad together. Right, so it's not a question of going and picking this color and that color. You're picking a palette of colors that already go together. Right, and remember a long time ago we did a, we did a post about choosing colors. Do you remember that one? That's right, that was, that was a very early post. That was well. a very early one. And I, think, yeah. and I think this is kind of like a good follow-up to that because this will actually give people options for choosing colors that, like you said, are really pre-selected for just, just looking nice together. Definitely. And actually, what we'll do at the end of this post, we'll put the link for that particular posting as well, Carl, because it might be interesting oh, yeah, no, to idea. look at the two. Okay, right? good idea. So let's actually go directly to the site. Let me switch over to the site now. And the site is this one right here. Okay. So this is, you know, colorlovers.com. And how we found these colors, actually, do you know how we found the colors? 
No. So this is this has actually been shown to me for the first time as well, everybody. So it's going to be really interesting. It's actually the second time. We just didn't get it the first time, so I'm going to do it the second time now. <laughs> he didn't have... Please defend me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so a very interesting site. It's very easy. All you got to do is go to Browse. Mm -hmm. And at Browse here, you go to Palettes. That's easy enough, I think. Yes, yeah, the first one there. So very easy. Mm -hmm. Now... There are a few different categories of colors. Now, the interesting thing is that the colors are updated regularly. Do you know how regularly that is, Carl? Is uh, it I believe it's... Or? Well, you can have daily because they have like by the day, by the week, and by oh, the month. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Okay. Or okay. in this case, we're, we've got all here. Mm -hmm. So what's here is when the, in the browsing, I believe it's just the most up-to-date ones that you can see here. Great. Okay. So they've got some really interesting colors here they could choose for your presentations. Now, what you do, what I like to do, though is I like to choose the most loved, okay? Or right. you can choose the most viewed or the most commented on, the most favorited, whatever you want. Well, okay. I, th I think the most loved is probably a good one to choose because it gives us the impression that people really like these colors. So when you do your presentation, as an example, the colors are going to be effective. Run, that's a very good point, actually. Okay, good. So if you click on most loved, then you're going to get a ranking of the ones that have the most loves, okay? Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, they're actually ordered in, you know, this one here. I don't know why this is the most loved. Do you like this one, this first one? I don't. It's a bit bland, actually. Yeah, I actually personally do not like it. But maybe not for a presentation. Maybe it was used mm -hmm. for something else. Maybe. Right. Yeah, so you, we must point at this site, you know, other, it's used for other purposes as well. Right, exactly. It? So um, in any case, what happens is when you hover your mouse over, Okay, it expands, so you can see more mm -hmm. of the actual color palette. Now, the colors that were used in the presentation that you saw were actually this one right here, this third one here, okay? okay. It was the third most loved, it was called Thought Provoking. And originally I actually selected this giant goldfish one, but I found the colors too pastel looking. Okay. So okay. I didn't like that, so I ended up going with this one here because I needed something for the fonts as well, because this one here didn't offer anything dark for the font colors. Right, and also the reason you chose a thought-provoking one, Carl, was that because of the supposed audience that you thought this presentation was going to be for? Uh, not necessarily no? for the audience, but okay. more for the idea that I wanted colors that were not kind of normal, mm -hmm. that would be somewhat bright, but not obviously, you know, rainbow bright. Okay. And they still looked professional because it was for... So I guess, yes, I did choose it for the audience because I knew that it was going to be for professionals. Right. Uh, government officials, so it okay. couldn't be too neon-y. Is that a word, right. neon -y? It is now. Oh, thank you. So it's, I'm going to use that later on the radio too, neon-y. Uh, anyway, so it's not going to be too bright, and I decided, okay, this might be good you know, for something professional. Because if you look down here, these other colors, like if you're going to mm -hmm. choose a color for your presentation, you do need kind of like a dark color for text. No, you're absolutely right. And I, I think this is a really good point. When you're choosing your color, don't just choose the colors because you think they're necessarily pretty. You've got to think of what your presentation is about and who's going to be watching that presentation. I think that's important. No, absolutely. Very, very good point. And even like, for example, this here wouldn't be bad in terms of like a very dark color for, you know, for your text or something. Mm -hmm. And then maybe some like backgrounds. And that's what I did with mine. So uh, if you look at what I did, where's the actual one here? So that was it there. Right. So if you look at what I actually did here, you can see, I'll make this a little bit bigger. And I'll just close these things here. Actually, we're going to use that, so I won't close that. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you one that actually did... Um, this is the, the one of the colors in that palette, and the palette itself was this one here. Right. So I chose this kind of, you know, red or orangey... This orange color here, and I put it in the background, uh -huh. and I put this yellowy color here for the text. Right. Right, so that's how I did that. And then for this slide here, okay... So I use the dark color, the combination of the dark purple, mm -hmm. the deep purple, and the orange. Okay. Right? So that's how, that's how I did that. So uh, if you go back here then, um, how do you actually get the colors? Well, Right, the, the, this is the big thing, right? How do we get the colors from there and actually onto the slides themselves? Right, so you click on the color palette you like. Mm -hmm. And on the right-hand side, they can, you can download the image of this palette. Oh, I see. Okay, okay they allow you to download this here. So I don't know what this create pattern thing is. Honestly, I've never tried it yet, but you can. Uh, and the colors are actually listed here by themselves individually. Do you have to sign mm -hmm. up to the site, Carl? No, completely. No, it's totally okay. free. And I don't even think, you know, it says here, 
commercial use is not allowed. Okay, so luckily I didn't use it for commercial purposes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I didn't check that actually. Okay. But that's something that is a very good thing to check because I didn't even notice that they had this palette license. I, I guess that's really similar to imaged images. You know, when you go into the, the photo sites, you've got to be careful about the images that you use, you know, because sometimes you have to pay for them and, and so on. So once you download it, and if you are using Keynote, this is what you do. You would open up that image in, you know, uh, preview or whatever, you, however you want to open it up. And then I'll make it bigger so you can see it easier. But let's say, for example, I wanted to change this purple here, okay, into this blue here. Okay. So what you do is you would uh, highlight this blue, make it smaller so I can see the other thing too. Okay, so I can see the colors underneath. Okay, so what you do then is you would highlight the text that you want to change. Okay, right. this is one way to do it. Mm-hmm. You would then click on this little magnifying glass. And then this magnifying glass, once you click, it'll take that color and put it into this space here. Or in this case, because I've highlighted it, it'll change it automatically. Oh, I see. Right. Okay, so I'll select this one. Boom. It's done. That's pretty simple then, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really cool, actually. I thought it was a pretty amazing thing. The other thing you can do, though, is let's say you've selected the color previously. So you're like, okay, I'm going to select you know, this purple color here. Right. So another way you can do it, you can actually change all of this stuff here by just dragging, clicking and dragging this little paint chip. And if you pop it on here, all these will become dark. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you know, to change it back, you can either just, you know, select it again. And let's say you want it red this time. There you go. Okay, that's pretty simple, I think, isn't it? And so you do the same manner if you want to change the background of your slide car. Now that is a little bit different. What you do okay. then... So you choose the color first. Let's say you wanted to make this, um, you know, yellow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then you drag it and you actually drop it over the slide here. Oh, okay. Then. There. Right. So now this becomes the color of the slide. You can't, it's not like an image you can move around or anything. It's the color of the slide now. Right. So that's a little bit different. So just, just shows that one more time. Color, yeah, sure. I think, for everybody. So, so, okay. So you click on this and then you take whatever color, like let's say you wanted it green like this here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you drag this paint chip, click and drag over your slide. Okay. And it comes right. green. So the cool thing about this in terms of design is you can do something like, uh, let me see if I've got an example of it here. What I did is like sometimes you might have an image that's not going to cover the, that might not be suitable to put text over it. Okay. And, oh yeah, they're here, this one. So ah. this one here. So what I did was I made this box. Right, so you've got kind of like the background color to make the text stand out more. Right, and I made this slightly like um, uh, opaque. I put the mm-hmm. opacity at like 50% or something. Right. But that color is actually the color of this chicken. Now, how did you do that then? Exactly like this. I just took it, I did this, I went over the chicken, and then I dropped that chicken color into this box here. Okay. And there it is. And then I suggested the opacity, and uh, actually it's not doing it right now, hang on a second, I select it. And, oops, hang on a second, it does work. Of course I'm going to screw it up right now, but, <laughs> but it does work, okay. Uh, hang on a second, why isn't it working right now? Just a minute, now I'm getting, okay. What the hell? What did I do wrong here? Okay, let's try that again. Okay, this is not working for okay, some reason. Okay. How do I do that? I don't know, Carl. Okay, there was a way to do it. Okay, we should know this. It, it does work uh, when you slide it, but that's what you do. Now, let's say, for example, the, the reason why I did that is because when you do this kind of box, mm-hmm. if you take a little bit of color from one of the images or whatever in your background, right. it'll make it look like your box is somehow matched to your background. Logical. So it's just a good little design yeah. tip for you. So... Let's say, for example, I wanted one of the darker colors, mm. or I wanted the silver color here kind of thing, this dirty silver color. So there then I do the there. same thing. Right. And there it is. That's a neat little trick, Will. Okay. So why it's not doing this is just beyond me. Why is that not working right now? 
Okay, so that was basically it. That's the whole thing right there. We showed you the website, which was colorlovers.com. Mm -hmm. And then we showed you how it works with Keynote. And I think in PowerPoint, there's a similar function that you can do. We'll have to test it out maybe and, and show you. But uh, it works really well in Keynote. Why I couldn't get the, op you know, the opacity thing to work, I have no idea. How do you say that? Do you say opacity or opacity? Opacity. Do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Opacity, opacity. In any case, so... Actually, you've got me thinking now. Let's do the ending again. Okay. <laughs> we don't do the ending. That's, that's fine, actually. That's, that's okay. No, we don't do the ending again. That's fine. Okay. In any case, so that was a site. So what should they do? Well, go, go to the site yourself. Pick a palette. You know, give that, that consideration about your audience and about the presentation itself and use it and let us know how it works out, let us know the palettes you use as well, maybe. Right, right. Show us the palette you used and show us how it worked out for you. So, anyway, that's it. Okay, thanks very much. All right, bye.